Dang it. Nice. All right, what's up guys? We are out here on the new 2020 Santa Cruz Tallboy. Man, this is just a brand new, all new bike. It's insane. The funny thing is, is when the Tallboy first came out just two or three years ago, uh, by the way, it's uh, September 2019. I was riding a Santa Cruz 5010 at the time that I had just bought from Chris over at Go Ride in Draper. And uh, when the Tallboy came out, I was like filled with regret after riding it. So I was like, ah, dang it, I should have bought the Tallboy instead of the 5010 because it was just such a incredible. I mean, that was the first 29er that I rode that was just like all there, just super fun, really fast. So getting out on this Tallboy 4 today, I've just been licking my chops to get out on this. So Chris was nice enough. Uh, Chris is the manager and kind of runs the shop over there at Go Ride and Draper. Kind enough to get these bikes and come out with me and see what all the fuss is about about this new uh, Tallboy 4. So uh, yeah, if you're local, head over to uh, Go Ride and Draper. Talk to Chris or Manny. Just excellent guys to work with and no bike business real well. Can get you set up. We're climbing. You can probably hear it in my breath. Running out of breath here, but uh, climbing on the tall, tall boys, uh, no problem. I've tried it in the, the trail mode on that Fox DPS float shock and in the open position, and both are really good. Um, comes spec with a little bit bigger tires, the DHF by Maxxis up front and DHR2 on the back. If I bought the bike, I'd probably swap them out, uh, but Man, from what Chris tells me, descending on this bike is incredible for a 120 mil travel bike, and that I'll be glad to have that extra traction and braking surface of those bigger tires. But uh, yeah, climb's good. Um, let's get up to the top here and see what this thing descends like. Woo, I'm out of breath. Uh, the GoPro effect probably doesn't show uh, the steepness of that little trail, but it gets kind of steep. I'm five foot eight, riding a size medium today. It definitely feels like a longer bike than the previous tall boy. And you can feel the geometry change. Uh, just feels more slack. About 65 and a half degree head tube angle and steeper seat tube, seat tube angle, you know, 76 degrees or so. But let's get up to the top here and see how it descends. Nice, Chris. Uh, Chris is like one of the smoothest riders. I always love getting out with him. Nice. Man, it feels super smooth for 120 millimeters of travel. Whoa, dang. Man, I didn't know what I would expect riding this. You know, I ride a lot of 120 mil bikes. In fact, my own personal bike right now is a Ibis Ripley. Oh, he's just so smooth through that section. Yeah, I mean, it definitely feels different than the Ripley. Kind of bottomless feeling. Like a bigger bike. So I'm riding the, uh, the S build. So it comes with the Fox 34 up front and the DPS shock out back. Chris up there is on the X01 build. That comes with a pike and uh, I think that that's the way to get the bike or at least find a way to get a pike on the front of this because the back of this bike feels deep. Dude, the rear end feels amazing on this thing. I think it outmatches the uh, Fox 34 on the front.
Dude, that was sick, man. Was so fun. And what do you think? Um, this is a truly one of a kind bike. I haven't ridden anything like this, oh, honestly, ever. I've, usually short travel bikes have a firm racy feel to them. Yeah. And I rarely enjoy riding them. I'll get one and ride it for a short period of time and end up on something else. And this bike encourages me to ride it hard and ride it fast and have fun on it. It begs for speed. It loves the corner and the faster you ride it, the better it feels, but it's also really easy to ride at slow speeds. And so it's just a truly enjoyable experience. Every time it's just like bliss to ride this bike. Yeah, that was so much fun, it's dude. Incredible. Yeah. And Jacob Sly, that stuff we're riding, you're, you're averaging over 23, over 24 miles an hour the whole time down that three minute segment. Yep. There's and a lot of low traction scenarios and braking bumps and it usually feel a little scared like sliding to the edge of something but you can just lean on it and put it on edge it carves through things and like kind of springs out the other side with newfound speed that i rarely feel on any bike let alone a short travel bike like this usually you got to get a bigger travel bike to ride like that but it's a little lethargic yeah a little heavier and slower so this is a a truly unique combination it just wants me to try and go faster and harder every time i ride it it feels effortless yeah, I thought it was awesome. I, in fact, honestly, I, I could feel the limitation was the fork for me, that mm -hmm. Fox 34. I think this bike with a pike. Yeah, the pike's pretty unreal. I bottomed it a couple times, but it's fine. You know, yeah. it just takes it and just keeps going. Yeah. But yeah, I do push the tires kind of to the edge of the limit pretty quickly, but I don't want to put anything bigger on it. Yeah, So it just totally. makes it fun, kind of fits with the rest of the package. That was awesome. Let's get down on these lower trails and okay. see what it's like on the flow, flow trails. Okay. It just feels really smooth really deep feeling and uh man but there's still like a really good platform to stand on pump off and jump off things so man it's just really that's a neat uh, suspension style and honestly if you haven't heard me say it enough if you guys watch my channel and subscribe to my channel 120 mil travel 29er is about all the bike I need just about everywhere I go. I mean, there's those days where I go up to the lift serve ski resorts and I need a little bit more, but it's just so impressed, nice, with how these bikes ride. I mean, one thing about this bike compared to the Ibis Ripley, uh, the Ripley definitely feels lighter weight underneath you, but this bike still has a good pop to it. Springs off stuff just, just fine. The, the biggest difference between the two bikes is climbing. The Ibis Ripley just climbs like a race bike. It's incredible how well that thing climbs. And this wasn't bad for everyday riding. I mean, for an all day bike, go out and ride all day. This tall boy would, would definitely be a bike to consider. Kind of feels like it has a low center of gravity. Like it feels like, especially through all these turns and whoops where you're kind of pumping the bike. Um, so I'm riding it, now that we are down here in these lower sections, I'm riding it with the Fox DPS in the middle section, the trail mode. So it's a little stiffer feeling, a little more of a platform to stand on and push on those pedals. And uh, that was uh, as per Chris's recommendation. He's been riding this bike for a while now. And man, I gotta say, I really like it. Interestingly enough, I used to own a Rocky Mountain Instinct I'd ride that bike the same way. I'd always ride it in the trail mode. Okay, this is lower rush. This is a real fast, uh, flowy section of trail. Nice. Nice, Chris. Yeah. Man, just popping off everything. The geometry of this bike just kind of begs you to just give it everything. But at the same time, nice. Same time, I wouldn't say you have to ride the bike super hard to have fun, but man, you can push this bike really hard. I think the guys, yeah, the guys who are not wanting a full on cross country bike, but don't want a big enduro bike, this might be the ticket. Ah, grab too much brake. Nice. Kind of wussed out in that last corner. Try to catch him right here. 
Man, it's nice having these big chunky tires on here for the downhill though. So much grip. Nice, Chris. Man, the bike's just fun. Let's see if we can hit this double right here. Oh, easy. Totally easy. Dude, I've never had more confidence coming into that double right there yeah. on a short travel bike. It's just all there. It's an easy bike to ride fast, and it's so much fun and rewarding to do it. Oh, I was just talking about that. You don't have, we're, we're pushing it pretty hard right now, but you don't have to, it feels, no. God, it just feels effortless. It's fun at cruising speeds, but it loves to be pushing it too. It's incredible. Dude, let's get this last section. That was so yeah, fun. Totally fun. Oh, totally. Nice. Hey guys, I just got back from my ride on the 2020 Santa Cruz Tallboy 4. Just such a rad 120 mil travel bike. Um, for those of you who don't uh, already subscribe and follow the channel, I ride uh, Ibis Ripley, which is 120 rear, 130 front, same as this Santa Cruz Tallboy. And so I've got a lot of time on these bikes. I've ridden a bunch of them. I used to own a, a Pivot uh, Trail 429 and uh, I've ridden the Intense Sniper Trail. Uh, the Yeti SB100 and the Yeti SB130. One thing about, about this bike though is on the really fast section of downhill, the front fork got overwhelmed. I mean, the back, the back of this bike just is so plush and so stable and the geometry of the bike is so capable at like super high speeds through the rough terrain. Honestly, the fork got a little overwhelmed. I mean, you can get this bike with a pike. In fact, the Chris, the guy riding with me, Chris, He's riding it with a pike on it. If you buy the uh, one of the higher levels, I was on the S build today. If you buy one of the higher levels, it comes with the RockShox pike. I bet you that, that would be pretty incredible to try out or man, dare I say even a Fox 36, which sounds super bizarre to be saying about a tall boy because the previous generation tall boy was such a good cross country 29er that still was fun and playful. This is nothing like the previous tall boy. If you're one of those guys who's like, oh man, they ruined the new tall boy. It's nothing like the old tall boy. Well, they didn't ruin this. Go buy the Santa Cruz Blur or a Yeti SB100 or honestly, even the Ibis Ripley. Um, this descends at a higher speed with more confidence and stability than my Ripley. Um, but on the, on the lower flow trails, this isn't any better than the Ripley there. But just at the really high speeds, it was really confidence inspiring. This has a lot of pop to it. It has as much pop as my Ibis Ripley does, which I feel like my Ibis Ripley has more pop than any other bike I've ridden. And so that's saying a lot about this tall boy, in my opinion, that on the lower, flowier trails, this ride's almost as good as the Ripley, I'd say. Um, but let's talk about climbing. I, I mean, this is no longer like your quintessential climbing cross-country bike. It just isn't. But it's a bike you can go out and be on all day long, uh, like I, I would take this bike over the high tower. I just rode the high tower last week. I would take this bike over the high tower for my, if I could only own one bike, I really would because, and I'd probably swap out the fork. I'd make sure I bought it with a pike. Um, I think it would be really cool. It comes in two really awesome colors, kind of this purplish color. It is purple, but it's kind of looks brownish or blackish too, but it's like a deep purple. And then it comes in that really bright yellowish green color. What else should I say? I mean, I bottomed out the rear shock a couple times. I put 165 PSI in that shock and I weigh 142 pounds. Getting heavier as I get older. Uh, and then 65 PSI in the fork. I never bottomed out the fork and it was just fine. Um, I guess, oh, I, if, if you didn't hear when I was riding, I rode this in the trail position on the DPS shock on the lower section of trail and it felt really good. I think that's why I had that extra pop to it. And that's what I'd recommend doing, honestly. It felt amazing. Um, climbing, I don't know. Nothing climbs like my Ibis Ripley. It's just that bike's insane, uh, an insane climber. But you know, it climbs better than the current high tower. Um, I, I don't think it climbs as good as the old tall boy. Maybe it does, but, but um, this tire setup today is pretty, pretty heavy duty tire setup, which was actually a lot of fun to have. 
And then the last thing I'm gonna say, jumping. I have more confidence jumping on this than I did on the Pivot Trail 429 or the Yeti SB100, the previous tall boy. I have more confidence jumping on this than I had the previous high tower, honestly. Just the geometry and the body position that you have on this bike is just dialed. Really, really good geometry on this bike. Uh, I'd say get out and demo one. If you're looking for one bike to do it all and you're not like smashing downhill tracks at 25, 30 miles an hour, this would be a pretty rad bike to go check out. Um, I'd love to do a head to head with a couple bikes now that these shorter travel bikes are getting uh, more enduro style geometry. It's just really cool geometry for a short travel, snappy feeling bike. Uh, the tall boy was great. Um, yeah. I think that's about, I've said it all, I think. Uh, go check it out. Thanks to the guys over at Go Ride. Um, you can fit a full-size water bottle in there. I'm wearing my Lab Austere hip pack today. Carries two bottles and all the essentials right here. I don't go anywhere without this pack anymore. I'll have a link to the description of this pack. You can get 25% off using the coupon code in the link, uh, uh, MTB Yum Yum. And uh, thanks for subscribing and watching. Stick around. I've got more videos coming out. i uh, going to be demoing the SB, Yeti SB140 here soon. But um, yeah, what a great time to be a mountain biker. Seriously, I just can't believe how good bikes are getting. Every year, I'm going to be saying this for the rest of my life, but they just keep getting better. There's so many good options out there. Uh, if Santa Cruz is, is the one you're looking for, go give the tall boy a rip. You won't be disappointed at all. It was incredible. Rip and turns, Chris. Look at you in your mid-40s ripping turns I don't think I've ever seen Chris have so much fun on a bike